Hello everyone, welcome back to Micro Learning Program of MFM. Today, I would like to talk about Wanika and Kofulpati. Each word is described as an acute encephalopathy by German neurologist Karl Wernicke in 1881. It is characterized by these three facts, mental confusion, automoplegia, and gag ataxia. And uh, another one is obtrusive finding of pentate hemorrhages in, around the third and fourth ventricles and the aqueduct. Okay, uh, why does this happen? It is due to vitamin B1 or diamond deficiency, which results from malnutrition for two to three weeks. Or although we have an intake of nutrition, but if the diet is disproportionate, such as high in carbo carbohydrates and low in diamond intake, it will result in diamond deficiency and then lead to one of the complications of diamond deficiency, such as Wernicke and Kefalopathy. Uh, here is a long list of conditions that can lead to vitamin B1 deficiency. Uh, to make a brief, uh, vitamin B1 deficiency is generally due to uh, a lack of intake, lack of intake, or another one is due to inadequate, inadequate intake, such as. Uh, uh, disproportionate in diet and another one is we may have good nutrition but uh, if we have huge loss or great loss from the body we may face uh, vitamin b1 deficiency and then lead to ronica and cephalopathy the main deficiency can affect both uh, the central nervous system and cardiovascular system if it affects the cardiovascular system uh, it is called white berry berry, and it if it it affects the central nervous system, it is called uh dry berry berry, which contains uh signs such as uh Wernicke and Kefalopathy. Here is classical triad for Wernicke and Kefalopathy, which contain uh encephalopathy, oculomotor dysfunctions, and gait ataxia. However. It is uh, less common to uh, be able to find um, these three signs together in patients with Wernicke and Kefalopathy. In only one third of patients, uh, we will be able to find uh, all these three signs together. In two thirds of patients, we will be able to find one or two signs of classical triad. Um, it is also possible that uh, no signs from classical triad may be uh, found in patients with Wernicke and Kefalopathy. Here, we should uh, consider the history of uh, patients uh, in percentage uh, mental changes is 82%. Ocular is 29% and ataxia is 23%. Uh, ataxia often precedes uh, following other symptoms by a few days or weeks. Encephalopathy, the sign is characterized by profound disorientation, such as patient may not know uh, where he is right now and uh, when it is now and another uh, one is indifference and inattentiveness, uh, which means he cannot focus anymore. As uh, ocular dysfunction, nystagmus, mass, uh, lateral right eye paresis, and conjugate gaze paresis may be found. These are uh, lesions of the oculomotor, abscesses, and vestibular nuclei. Ocular abnormalities are uh, usually uh, found in combination rather than alone. Uh, Nister Marx is the most common finding and most, uh, mostly horizontal gaze, but uh, vertical nystagmus may also be found. Uh, lateral right eye paresy is virtually always bilateral. Ataxia uh, it is likely due to combinations of polyneuropathy, cerebellar involvement, and vestibular dysfunction. If the uh, 
sizer severe uh, even walking uh, may be impossible but in less effective patients and uh, they work with a wide spaced gait and slow short space steps uh, gait abnormalities are appreciated only on certain gait in some patients Cerebellar pathology is generally restricted to the anterior and superior vermis, so um, ataxia of the legs or arms in dysarthrias or scanning speech are uncommon. Uh, vestibular dysfunction may be the major cause of uh, gait ataxia in Wernicke and Kefalopathy. Uh, this also explains the dissociation between gait and lip abnormalities. These finding contrast with those reported in patients with alcoholic cerebellar degeneration in whom low extremity ataxia is common. Uh, if we suspect onica encephalopathy, it is better to do administering diarmy, which is therapeutic diagnosis rather than other kinds of investigations. However, uh, there are some laboratory testing uh, to be able to detect uh, diamine deficiency, uh, such as measuring erythrocyte diamine transketylase activity. And we can also check a serum magnesium concentration because uh, depletions of magnesium uh, can mimic features of Wernicke and Kefalopathy. Uh, imaging study can also be done for detecting Wernicke and Kefalopathy, but uh, it does not need necessarily to be done because uh, it would delay treatment. However, uh, diagnostic imaging is also helpful to provide evidence of Wernicke and Kefalopathy. It may rule out alternate diagnosis. Uh, MRI of the brain may show bilaterally a, a symmetric increase in T2 signal at the paraventricular regions of the thalamus and mammillary bodies. Uh, other areas of increased signal include hypothalamus, periaqueductal region, four of the foot ventricles, and midline cerebellum. Uh, how to treat uh, Wernicke and Kefalopathy? Uh, there may be uh, some uh, supported treatment to uh, treat uh, Wernicke and Kefalopathy, but uh, the main treatment is uh, vitamin B1 or diamine intravenous infusions. Uh, despite of uh, adverse reactions, including anaphylaxis and bronchospirosis, it is really, uh, really effective uh, to treat Wernicke and Kefalopathy. According to data in the United Kingdom, uh, there were uh, four reported cases for every 5 million intramuscular uh, doses used and one report for every 1 million intravenous doses used. Uh, here, uh, we need to be aware of this fact. Uh, administrations of glucose without diamine can precipitate or worsen uh, 1K encephalopathy. So, uh, diamine should be admi administered before glucose. Uh, another one uh, which we need to be aware of is that uh, in some patients, oral administration may be available, but uh, it could be and reliable in initial treatment because uh, GI absorption of diamine is erratic in alcoholic and malnourished patients. So uh, here we need to give uh, a diamine uh, through IV infusion initially. Uh, Patients with suspected Wernicke and Kefalopathy require immediate parenteral administrations of thiamine. Uh, if a patient's history is strongly suggestive for uh, vitamin B1 deficiency, we need to give uh, thiamine uh, infusion urgently. Uh, in alcoholics with Wernicke and Kefalopathy, uh, we we'll treat with uh, 
500 mg of diamine hydrochloride dissolved in 100 ml of normal saline infused intravenously over 30 minutes three times daily for two to three days. Uh, if there is a response, uh, continue with 250 mg of diamine uh, IV or IM daily until clinical improvement ceases. Uh, in non alcoholic we want to care and control body, we treat with 200 mg of thiamine dissolved in 100 ml of normal saline, uh, infused intravenously over 30 minutes, three times daily for two to three days. Um, uh, if there is a uh, clinical improvement, uh, we will switch to oral administration. Uh, recommended oral dose after completed parental treatment for NK and is diamine, uh, 30 to 100 mg twice daily. Okay, uh, let, let's talk about clinical course and prognosis. Uh, after uh, institutions of treatment, uh, some signs such as ocular gaze and uh, gaze parity begin to improve uh, within hours to days. Uh, Mr. Max, gay ataxia and confusion may recover within days to weeks. If ocular parity fails to respond, uh, we should need to reconsider other diagnosis. Uh, Approximately one third uh, recover from the state of global confusion within six, six days of treatment, another third within one month, and the remainder within two months. Uh, there can be long term sequelae such as a residual nystagmus or gait ataxia in approximately 60% of patients and uh, chronic memory disorder causing amnesty syndrome in more than 80%. Uh, overall, mortality rate is about uh, just uh, 17%. A summary of today's topic, we need high index of suspicion to make diagnosis and uh, we should not wait for clinical triad because it is also possible to find patients with Wanake encephalopathy without classical triad so we must not delay treatment uh, we will give high dose of diamine infusion as treatment and we'll do uh, to prevent long-term consequences and to prevent mortality here, we may need to give health education about eating uh, patterns and uh, things uh, that uh, patients uh, usually take um, and uh, some other ways uh, to prevent another even like this uh, according to uh, the course, causes of uh, vitamin B1 deficiency. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, have a nice day.